Hello, and welcome to Talking Video Games. My name is Gerald, uh, otherwise known as Ignatius487, for those of you on my channel, of course, and which is, I guess, where this will be. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use this for your channel. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex. I'm from Dudes Doing Stuff. Uh, also hopefully known at some point. as Dude the Manatee. Indeed, that's actually going to be the uh, YouTube channel when I make my own solo channel at some point. Okay. I'm probably going to end up calling it that. Dude. So in the future, look for that. Mm -hmm. Or the past, depending on when you watch this. Anyway, uh, so talking video games. Our... Uh, this is pre predominantly... I've, I've actually been wanting to do this for a long time. Uh, this is predominantly a result, though, of boredom before D&D. &D. True. Um, but I have been wanting to do this for a long time. This is going to be a talk show kind of thing where we talk about video games. We do, guests every now and we do then. game reviews. We'll have guests. I'm sure Eli, if he's ever here during this, we'll bring our friend Dave in. We'll bring we'll, Jesse in. Yeah, from we'll have we'll have show. guests. We'll have guests people. Uh, this hat, by the way, is an awesome wizard hat. Uh, courtesy of Eli, the roommate. These glasses are just my glasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, now if you can't tell, we're doing Skyrim. It's probably about the dragons, though, right? Yes, but yes. Uh, so I would have been concerned if we were doing, like, a little, uh... Insert random right. from the 80s. I, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> right. Pong. Pong would have been weird to have the dragon. Yes, play. yes, indeed. So this is Alduin from the special edition... Skyrim box. It cost me 150 bucks. 2011. Yes. So uh, for those of you who don't know, ago? yes. Five years ago now. Super, t uh, super long time ago. Yeah. For, for those of you who don't know, uh, Skyrim is the fifth installment of the Elder Scrolls a game by Bethesda so uh, Softworks. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I love Bethesda. All things Bethesda. I like most things Bethesda. Which is why, well, yeah, that's fair. Most things. Um, they are good though. They're, they're, they're very good at what they do. That's why I bought the special edition back in 2011 that came with the dope ass dragon statue. Right. Um, this released 11, 11, 11. Right, right. We I were... remember that because we, we all, me, you, and uh, if you guys watched the D and D stuff with the other group that I'm not <clears throat> in, Corey was there. Mm-hmm. Because y'all are psychopaths. Yeah. So we went to the local mall. We had it prepared. <clears throat> we waited there until midnight. We got the awesome box. We went back to Corey's place, uh, which was in this little dingy under. Like, yeah, it was. Like, it was like a basement. basement. It, it was the quintessential was... nerd apartment, like starting out. Outside of your mother living upstairs. <laughs> yeah, and we played that. That from midnight ish all the way until class. I which, think I think we had to test that day. You 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 two did. And, and it was, it was I just like, and you guys came back and had my character made we, finally. We were just like, I don't give a shit. We're just gonna play some Skyrim <laughs> until we get, ex and we were just completely you were dead. You were dead. exhausted. It was, great. it was good times, but um, it 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 did a lot of really good things. Uh, it, it it of course fixed some of the problems of previous games. It introduced new problems, right, 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 which we'll get into. But at the same time, it was one of the most solid games released in the last 10 years easily. Yes. And then re-released uh, in the last, what, two weeks? Yes. Which is uh, what it, we're really here it, to talk about. We're not even going to talk about yes. it. Yes. Uh, we're here to talk about the special edition, which I is... I don't think we can see. You probably <laughs> can't really see it. We, yeah, you can kind of see it. Your anyway. eyes are really good or you blew this up to full screen. Maybe. Also, <coughs> you can see back here Gosh. the uh, the gaming triangle, which we'll be getting into talking about here in a little bit. I should apologize. I've been having a lot of phlegm lately, so I'm going to call for a lot and drink water. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, keep holding the cup here like I'm drinking out of the cup, but I'm not. And I just put it here because there's dragons on it. It's super cool. Anyway, it looks we're, we're going yeah. to move that. this. Out of the way. Uh, I just wanted to showcase oh, that's that. Loud, isn't it? Probably that's going to be loud. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. It'll be fine. All right, so let's let's talk about the gaming triangle. So this is what we're going to be using this. in talking video games. Uh, this is something that I want to say I read about a long, long time ago. Maybe I made it up. I don't know. I've known about it for a long time. I'd like to say you made it up, but at the same time, I don't think I did. I don't think did. you did because I I've read this place. I really I don't think I did, but I stole it. But if he so did, dibs. I'm using it. it. 
forevers. Because it, uh, it is a very good way to rate video games. So the game Triangle, which you probably can't see, consists of three parts. Every game has three parts. Gameplay, graphics, and story. Next time we do this, let's do it all in black marker. It would look so much better. Yeah, that's fair. Note to the viewers. Remind us in the comments below. Thank you. Anyway. Uh, am I getting... Am I, am I, hang on. I think it's your hat. We got the, hat is, the, hat. the hat is poking like Whew. the name of the game and everything. It's probably it's, warm, too. It's warm. It's... it's uh, what is this fabric called? It's probably heavy felt, isn't it? Wool? It's heavy felt. It I don't know. No, never mind. That's wool. It's wool. Uh, <laughs> it's toasty McWarm sauce is what it is. And uh, as much as I love it, I think it's a freaking sweet hat. I'll probably wear it a little bit during D and D because Mama. reasons. Yeah. Uh, but for now, the same reason we're with the goggles. We'll just must the hair up. Who cares? All right. So uh, we're going to talk about. Obviously, this is the the introductory video of talking video games. So if it sucks, we suck. Uh, we're which, sorry. by the way, practice. if you. Get the reference of the title of the show. We appreciate it. Kudos to you, and uh, thank you to uh, the actual creators of this for not saying this. Because fair use policy. <laughs> Which they reference in the very first track. Yes, yes. So uh, we're going to start with. Let's just go across the board here the way we have it. You guys probably can't see it, but we can. We're going to talk you through it. Well, and yeah, the text is a little bit difficult to read. We're going to talk ourselves through it, too, because um, we're going to make points outside of what we have listed here. Can I zoom? I don't know. Oh, can... my God, I can zoom. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's neat. dope. That's a neat little program we have there. It is. It is. All right. Sorry. I'm very much amused by uh, things. Anyway... We're going to start with gameplay. Skyrim is a uh, holy crap! It is a huge game. I yeah, cannot. It's a monster. At uh, the time, it was the biggest open world game made, wasn't it? Yes. When it was originally made. Um, I think now it's not. I but... think the game that overshadowed it in terms of overall time of play is Xeno Xeno Saga Xeno Blade Xeno Blade Chronicles. It? Yeah. Which well, well, I started and is holy crap huge. Like it would take you an hour to walk across the freaking city. It's huge. Anyway, not relevant. We're on Skyrim. <laughs> so gameplay, uh, this, it's first person. Most people play it first person. But I'm a monster. Uh, I actually, <laughs> I, I, was, I was talking to, who was I talking to? One of my buddies. And he uh, thinks the third person visual mode is kind of crap. And I... Tend to agree, um, but at the same but, time, how long did it take you to make your first character? Forever. Why would you use a first-person game mechanic in a game where you customize yourself? And that—that that was always my big argument. Because do you remember the first character I made when you guys came back from that test we were talking about, the swole dark elf? Yeah. Yeah. It was a dark elf that I made. It was the biggest dark elf ever. He hit the gym every now and then. But you can see my ear. Can we? How about that? Anyway, not relevant. Um, a huge part of the game. Can you zoom out? Can I zoom out? You guys, oh, of course you can. You guys can see all that. Well, we've left it up there long enough. You guys yeah. want to see us, right? That's right. We're gonna zoom out. Okay, there we go. Mucho better. All right. All right. I'm gonna keep trying like this because it's easier for me to read what's behind us. And you wrote this, so you know more about what you wrote up here yeah. than I do. Um, a huge part of the Skyrim. And really, um, Elder Scrolls in general has been, uh, well, I say that. Skyrim is the first game to introduce crafting. In? In the sense of creating armor and weapons. You cannot, like, in, 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 in Oblivion, you can only enchant things. That's true. So it's the first one in that series, dude, definitely. I know it's there are not, other games out there who it's not have the done first, it. Right. It's not the first game ever to have crafting. But it's the first game obviously. in the franchise to do it, yes. which is huge because of all the materials you can go around and gather. Because you can do enchanting yes. while you're crafting, and it, it becomes makes, amazing. Right. It, it, it makes gathering shit. Because like, I, I remember because I played a shit ton of Oblivion and Morrowind. I love Oblivion, though. There's so much that you so can good. pick up that has absolutely no purpose. 
Uh, it weighs, you know, five, ten pounds, and it's worth, like, two gold. Yeah, like, the rolls of cloth. Yeah. That are, like, half a pound each that you find through every cave, every time you go to fight Draugr's. There's freaking, oh, the, those weigh three pounds and are Was worth it two gold. It's yeah. like, what the fuck? They're a waste. Why? You should never pick up anything in the game that weighs more than it's worth. Exactly. And sometimes weapons as well. Um, one of the biggest beefs that I have, and they fixed it, or somebody had had a mod. It's not on the special edition console yet, but I hope I hope eventually it does get there. But there's there's a mod on PC that lets you melt down weapons and armor into sort of constituent like ingots oh, again. Oh, so it acts kind of like the uh, Elder Scrolls Online did. Sort of. Because with yeah. the research idea, yeah. which I like, I, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Elder Scrolls so Online. like, I thought it was great. If you have a dagger. You can throw it into the smelter and make another iron ingot. You smelt it. You lose the leather, of course, but that makes sense. Because, you know, you're smelting. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, the bigger the armor piece, the more ingots you get, etc., etc. I thought that was really cool. It was actually a really uh, easy way to grind out smithing levels. But at the same time, craft, they're smelt, so craft, grindy smelt. to do that. If you want a perfect character. Though. Yes. Which um, we'll get to that probably in a second. Yeah, Actually, no, that's a perfect time to talk about it. The crafting grinding was probably my least favorite thing about it this is, game. It is a bit grindy. For those of you, by the way, that want to break Skyrim, because I know how to do this, because uh, I'm very good at breaking up uh, Bethesda games in general. This is true. Jewelry is the way to go. Jewelry Right. The jewelry and thing. Show me the jewelry thing. It's so, it's so stupidly easy to do, too. It's based on the value of the item you're crafting except for arrows. Arrows are a preset amount every okay. time. Da, 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 da. Because that that's a DLC thing. You used to not be able to craft arrows. You said da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it oh, it's true, yeah. That's so, right. Which craft, is annoying too if you play yes. a bow heavy character, which I yes. did. You have to buy your arrows, which is <sighs> bullshit. So but now, money all the time. you can craft them. That was a result, I believe, of the uh, Dawn Guard. DLC. Or, I think that's right. I think it's Dawnguard. Because I don't think it was the yeah. uh, the dragon one. Um, anyway, super handy. Um, talk about enchanting as well. Um, enchanting is... Second on my list of grindy things that I hated. Yes. <laughs> that is Because I always really dumped it in with uh, potion making as well. Because yeah. the potion making, you're basically trying to kill yourself to make new potions because you had to learn what all the components did. Right. And if you wanted to complete this game, you wanted to pull you know, a completionist on this, Yeah. it's almost impossible to do time-wise. You, you can't beat all of Skyrim right. in one legitimate setting. It can take you a long, long enchanting time. enchanting is functionally very much like <coughs> smithing. It's based on the value of whatever you're making. The, the end result. So what I would always do is scroll through what I have by way of enchantment options, see which one has the highest value, and then just craft a shit ton of those. So like I would make, for example, a bunch of hide bracers or whatever. And then you'd go and use use your the petty soul are gems. So easy to do too. Yeah. They're they're easy and cheap and they 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 they, they increase the bar enough that it's worth making them. Plus you can I might enchant have them. <laughs> You can you can enchant them, you know, by by gathering all the petty soul gems and lesser soul gems, the shit you never use to make your stuff. Right. <laughs> right. Because well, by the time you're to the point where you're grinding, you've already got every one of your weapons with souls too. So anything I, you kill is going to take a soul. I'm not huge on do. Well, I guess I will be. It was my favorite um, thing. I, I like the soul, soul trap still. spell. Uh, is is very good. Also with armor and sets like that, um, you can craft armor. Like my my set of armor made it so that my destruction spells and my restoration spells cost me nothing. Because you can do four four different pieces. Didn't you have a set of armor that you could look fire breathing dragons in the face as well, and they did nothing? Oh yeah, uh, you can do fire. So I think I have one price. Fi there's there's fire, frost, and shock resistance, which you can just just beast yourself out, so you're essentially immune to most destruction magic. Um, 
there's a lot of versatility in the enchanting system. True. I tend to go more, although with my with my current vanilla run, I'm running a uh, high elf, I've, which I've never done before. I've never played a high um, elf in any of the games either. I always play a human or a dark elf. Who starts with 50 more magicka. So being a caster is really dope. Right, right. Well, being um, a caster in these games is amazing, you know, because of the combat. Element. That's true, which we're, we're actually uh, getting to here. I know, it's like I was trying to segue. It's, it's a segue uh, into the next two points, which is the combat system. Uh, obviously, in Sorry, a boy. fantasy setting, it's first person, so you have uh, melee and Or ranged. third person. Or third person. Uh, the matters. default, it does matter. The, the default is first person. The default person. is first person. You're it's uh, Which, most, most people run first person, and that's fine. When I was playing the game and just walking anywhere, I played third person. If I had to shoot something with a bow and arrow, I played first person. Uh, speaking of the sort of combat system, this is the first game to have mounted combat. Where you can fight... In the series or in general? In the series. What was I say? Because... Not in general. So that feels like it's wrong. No. Uh, it's Red Dead. Red Dead, <laughs> Mountain Blade. Yeah. Uh, there have been several that had mounted combat. This is the first Elder Scrolls game to have mounted combat. Because in Oblivion, which was the first Elder Scrolls game to have horses, uh, you couldn't fight on them. Ah, the you horses. You could ride they them. They climb anything. Yes, the horse spiders. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to take the uh, the nightmare and everything. Oh, but man. so good. the mental combat in this game was really essential uh, because you could do so much with it if if things were trying to escape you and you were actually hunting them. Because there's a point where if yeah. you're over leveled, things run away from you. That's true. Uh, mostly it's the humanoid stuff, like bandits and vampires and stuff. They they will flee. Um, most of the at least at a certain point. They'll flee once they take so much damage. You're like, oh god, don't kill me. But if you're on a horse, you can run them down and murder them. And the Is horse, <laughs> this is actually a bit of a con. The horse AI is. Sorry, that's the cat shaking the cat. Not an earthquake, we promise, for in West Virginia. That doesn't happen. <laughs> that's funny. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't itch that Any, cat combat. Anyway, horse AI. <coughs> is uh, frustrating unless you have Shadowmere because Shadowmere is just a monster yeah, and true. you can't He's you very can't useful. kill Shadowmere without uh, you know being your beast like I have seen because I've played a lot of Skyrim like a shit ton of Skyrim I've seen Shadowmere kill a dragon really? by himself that's insane it is it's totally insane I took down our board it sorry <laughs> It, uh, yeah, it it landed, and, and your horse will fight to the death. Oh, absolutely. And, Anything. And if you have not Shadowmere, they'll die. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't know how many times I've seen giants kill Just, my horse yeah. that wasn't Shadowmere. Yep. Although, on the other hand, Shadowmere can kill giants, and it's it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But that's actually not my favorite part of the combat. Mine was the magic in this game. Well, it's not my favorite. It's frustrating. It was, uh, it was frustrating and good at the same time. Though. Yeah, because... Because you had mountain combat where you could be on top horse, of the horse, and you had your horse help you kill My something. horse was stealing my skill gain XP. That's true. That's what true. a jerk! Anyway. Yes, the magic is, is very good. I'm, I like um, it better than bow and arrow or actual melee combat, easily. My default is stealth ranged. At least, okay. I think that's everybody's original default in this game. Everybody's original default is stealth range because it's the easiest to do early on. Because when you're when you're low level and weak sauce, you get wrecked by like wolves and shit. True. And that's then, very true. Not like Morrowind wrecked. No, <laughs> that's fair. We're not not that. Kind uh, of but you do get wrecked I a have, lot by stuff. I and still. Deep in my soul, have so much rage for Morrowind. Well, I remember the first time I was playing, uh, I was I, well, I went and randomly, accidentally fought giants, and one of them crushed me. And the ragdoll physics of the game took over, and I was literally launched so high in the air that the game had time for me to respawn before I even saw the ground. Not hit it, but uh, saw it. That's a that's a great point. So an, another amazing thing of uh, about Skyrim and Bethesda games in general is 
the glitch is. Oh, you're so good. Well, this, this wasn't a glitch. You just hit me that hard. Uh, uh, right, I'm just saying, like, that is... <laughs> but the glitches is are, are epic. Amazing. I love the glitches. Eli, my roommate, who you've seen, he plays... Unless it's your first time here, then if you know various characters. go yeah. watch other things on the channel. And yeah. Anyway, uh, he had it for PS3 when it kind of first came out. And he made a character who I believe was High Elf named uh, Starkiller Skywalker, something like that. Anyway, somehow the game glitched to, the, to where he could cast magic indefinitely. Like, when his magic meter went all the way down, he, he, could, still cast. he could still cast. It's like... <laughs> What? So if he had a lightning spell, he could literally be... Yeah. I'd say if yeah. Just... just spam it. Huh. It was amazing. Neat. I was like, dude... Just how do that all the time. How did you luck out like that? It's amazing. And, and s however it happened, the glitch stayed stayed the whole game. <coughs> he just had infinite magic. It's a dope glitch. I don't know, I'm glad we're talking about magic, because that does take us to the next point, which is my least favorite part of the magic. I hate the shouts. Okay. I think they are an interesting idea, and if you had a Kinect on an Xbox 360, they were very cool. Yeah. Because you could scream at your TV and it would do it. Right. But at the same time, they were a waste. The shouts, my, my biggest problem with the shouts was the cooldown. The cooldown, especially for, like, the, the more powerful shouts, were... Even some of the weaker shouts. They were just excessive. Like you couldn't were use them. Frustrating. The only in one battle. the only one that had feasible shout recharge time was Dragon Rend. Because it would recharge right when you needed to use it again to keep the dragon on the ground. That was the only one. That was the only one. Which it yeah. was the only one that was useful for specific parts. Yeah. Because you couldn't um, cast it on They your had head. they had a lot of really a bunch cool of shouts. Uh, I like I like the shouts that does detect life that was a good um, one that one was super handy which you actually didn't shout you like whispered <sighs> it was cool it was actually the one of the few that I had trouble getting to work with the connect too because you whispered so I think the game wanted you to whisper into the connect yeah and I wasn't doing that because I was screaming at my TV because that's the point of a connect <laughs> take that Xbox <laughs> you know I'm right if it works the connects is real glitchy uh, it works really good for Netflix. That's true. If you want to tell your Xbox to go to Netflix yeah. and switch whatever Xbox episode pause. you're on, yeah, that's my favorite thing in the world. That's why I got to connect. Was that it's and Mass Effect? Super handy for sure. We are uh, DLC. DLC. Which oh, um, I don't have a lot of opinions about outside of just quick, quick what thing I've about read. shouts as well. Um, the shout, not on not too sure at all. It's the uh, whirlwind sprint is so useful when you're over encumbered. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Enough said, because you can't, you can't fast travel while you're encumbered. Which is dumb. Which is dumb. It just... Because you're just wasting time at that point. You're why, just making the game yeah, like, longer. Why don't they just make time pass faster and get me there, fuckers? <laughs> yeah, just, it caused me to waste more of my character's life, not my own. Yeah, <laughs> right? I don't play video games. Yeah. To watch now, myself slowly die holding a joystick. One thing I think I'll do uh, with my current Vanilla Run, which I'll be recording a little bit of again with some more Adventures in Skyrim videos, which I haven't done in a long, long time, um, is crafting armor specifically for adventuring. Right. So improving what carrying capacity. Are you playing on, are you playing on uh, Xbox One? I'm, I'm playing PS4. PlayStation? Okay. Because that, that makes a difference in this version of the game, too, for... That's true. Um, what we're going to talk about later as well. Which I, I did not... Mods on. I did not note, no, note mods. We'll talk about that. Yeah, let's do it now. It's mods. gameplay, right? Mods count. Yes. Well, let's talk about DLC first. Okay. So there are three DLC pieces, or uh, programs, whatever. Uh, there's Dawn Guard, right. which is the vampires. There's, I believe it's just called Dragonborn. Which is where you go to uh, Solstheim, which, right, is, right, which right. is a section of Morrowind, and then, and there's, then uh, there's Hearthfire. That's the one. Which I want to call it Hearthstone. You, I'm like, no, which, that's not right. That's the card game on your phone. Yeah, uh, which which lets you build your own house, which I'm actually doing right now in my run, um, which is taking so much material 
I'm uh, just out of cash right now. <laughs> Happens. Uh, which is actually what we're going to so talk about. So it's like about. real life in building a house. It, that's actually the final point, which we'll get to eventually. But eventually, the uh, the first portion. That's right. <laughs> the DLC the graphics won't take long. That's true. It won't. DLC is really good. I've played all of those. I will actually be recording that at some point. I don't know if I want to do it in the vanilla format or modded. Probably modded would be better. It'd be more entertaining. It'd be more entertaining. It'd be more to fun too, because you've played them before, right? Yes. So I think it'd be more fun for you. I, I haven't recorded them before. I think it'd be more fun for the people watching. Yeah, as well. that's true. So if mods. There's people who watch the then they would do that. It's up to you. Mods are freaking amazing. Mods are the reason that there's a special edition of this game. Yeah. That, that, that's it, hands down. And with you playing the PS4 version, it's going to be harder for you to get to mods. Well, I have a bunch of mods already. You do, but you don't have access to the same ones that the PC and the Xbox that's market true. do. That's true. And that's why I wanted to talk about it really quick here, is yeah. because it changes your gameplay. There is... So, on the... Uh, Sony and Bethesda worked out a, a deal where you can do mods now, because originally there weren't going to be mods for PS4. But they decided that, okay, we'll allow mods, but so long as they don't add stuff, like add files, uh, like audio files, right. video So elements. it was truly cosmetic mods. Yeah. Which is sort cool, of. but... Yes. Um, for example, one of my mods <clears throat> is a ring that improves my carrying capacity by 100,000. Which means... So you don't really have to worry about that whole over-encumbered thing. I don't thing have to worry about the over-encumbered thing, which is actually the final point, one of the cons of gameplay. The carrying capacity, especially early on, is infuriatingly small. So, you spend... <coughs> Sorry again, guys. <laughs> of the 400-plus of the hours, which is over here... You're not actually having 400-plus hours. You're talking about 600. About <sighs> 100 of those hours are spent trying to find shopkeepers that have gold that have gold <laughs> because but there's you have only to one sell, person buying things you have to sell to like 20 different people eventually to get rid of all the shit you have exactly because there's never enough gold because uh, there's one person buying all the stuff and it's right. you so you're basically selling your things to them to get your gold back to buy more things from them yeah. to sell back to them to get your gold back. Yeah, it's very redundant, uh, but also helpful in improving skills like smithing and alchemy. Right, right, right. But at the same time. Yes, alchemy, by the annoying. way, there are a lot of online guides to alchemy. Uh, alchemy is just like enchanting and smithing based on the value of the potion that you're creating. Which I was talking about earlier, and I... I I don't like the grindy aspect. And that, that, that's, for me, yeah. part of what soured the gameplay was One the thing, if you're, and the shopping. Yeah, if, if you're trying to avoid the grindiness, you can, and this is something cool that has been in all previous Elder Scrolls games, except for, I think, maybe the first two, because they're old as fuck. Yeah, they're anyway. <laughs> they're completely and, different monsters. Yeah, I mean, that's, they're, that's they're, true. It's like the first couple of yeah. fallouts compared to the ones later. They are... Like in Bethesda. Uh, you can buy training. You can purchase... Le essentially skill levels in each of those, things, yeah. each of those things in, in any of those things up to I want to say like 90 maybe and so. then and they're like I can't teach you anymore you gotta go get the last bit you gotta yourself. do it yourself which is fair but oh, at the same time to help um, something else and this I think originally started out as a mod for PC and Bethesda was like that's dope we're stealing it they did it in that voice too and that is <laughs> <laughs> and that is legendary Right. You can now, you can legendary your skills, which resets the skill level back to 15. You get all the perk points that you had in that skill back to spend elsewhere or to save until you increase that, that again. Um, but don't you keep all the other stuff that you got from it? Is that how that works? Well, no, like you have to re-put the points and like re okay. rebuild it up. Um now, obviously, that's really cool, and you can do a lot with it. The problem is you got to be real careful with it because there are some skills you don't ever do that with. Sneak, just because it's a pain in the ass to build back up. Anything lockpick related? Lockpick, pickpocket. archery related? Speech, <laughs> speechcraft. You never, ever legendary speechcraft because it takes forever to build up. Yeah, um, and no, just no. 
the combat ones, most of the time, the only thing I legendary are the magical groups. Yeah. Destruction because, magic is a good one to do because yeah. you use it constantly. Yeah, because you can craft items that make it so you can cast spells using no mana or magicka, whatever the hell they call it. Uh, it's the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not technos. So. I typically do alteration with detect life. Hmm in uh, Solitude. Solitude has a lot of people. That skill improves based on how many people you, how see. Many people you, you can see at, at a given Which time. Which is always good to do that in town, so you can just go, like, that's the noise it makes when you boost things up <laughs> fast. You get <laughs> just spam it. Yeah. So the the con, the primary con I have with gameplay is it's it is a little, it gets a little grindy. Um, I don't like that you can't quickly chop wood. Yeah. Uh, you have to sit through the animation on that. Like with mining, if you have a pickaxe, you can just hit the area and you mine it. Right, right, right. Uh, with the fire, the fire axe, no, you can't do that. You just gotta wait, and it generally does six pieces of firewood, and then the animation resets, and then you gotta do it again. Which is fine, because most of the time, like, you only use firewood either to sell for pittance, so nobody ever does that, or for making arrows. Which is useful. Which, Which is very, earlier, so. very useful, useful for making arrows. Uh, I'd say I agree. Like, for me, the whole thing with this game, the, the big downside of this game, gameplay-wise, for me, was the grindings. Uh, overall, I thought it was fun. Uh, I, I didn't sit up with you guys and buy my own version of the game that night. I you didn't were just buy, chilling with us. Yeah, I was just hanging out. I actually didn't buy the game until two weeks after it came out, and I found a pre-owned version of it for uh, 20 bucks. That's people that didn't like it. Returned yep. it very shortly thereafter. And they happened to have a sale where I bought it at, which we won't name the place. That happened to me. And I picked it up two weeks after it came out for twenty bucks, oh. and I got to play the crap out of it. It was fun. I liked there, it a lot. There, uh, <laughs> there's only one game that I remember in the recent past that I took back very shortly after I got it, and that was The Walking Dead: Survival Instinct. And we'll never review that game on this channel. We might just to like we tear, might review its, tear its another ass another Walking Dead game and re reference it a lot, but I, I refuse to because that means I have to play the game. God, and I can't no. bring myself to play Survival it's terrible. Instinct. It's terrible. We'll, we, we won't, it's not important. We won't diverge into that, but it's holy just bad. Crap. Don't buy it ever. I would say if you find it for like $2 somewhere. Save the uh, 2 bucks and go buy a bottle of water. <laughs> Try I mean it? That. I mean that. Save 2 bucks and go buy a bottle of water. Yeah. Uh, th there's no reason to ever the try. AI, the AI is If you want to play what now is considered a crappy first-person shooter, you're still going to get fun out of. Go play Goldeneye, because comparatively, it's awful. <laughs> or uh, two worlds. <laughs> <laughs> now we're really off the subject. Anyway, the, the, the really taint. quick before we get into graphics, we want to thank uh, Sirenscape. Yes, uh, Sirenscape is the uh, company that I use. For um, our background music, for my D and D music, for my background music, in general, when it's warranted. Uh, and we thought Skyrim not was right very now, but appropriate for it. But in general, we thank them for that. We appreciate their yes, their, yes, their yes, free yes, music because it makes it sound pretty in the background instead of me and him droning on about a game. Did it? No, it's it's being slow between each song. Oh, know, got it. Because it did a minute ago too. But that's basically this show's version of a commercial break, guys. So welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Hey. More music. That was timing right yeah. there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, uh, we're getting into graphics. Graphics. Graphics is going to take much less time um, because now, we're looking at a comparison of the new a ones quick, the old one. A quick, uh, a quick jaunt, I guess, into the game of Triangle. This, the game of Triangle must be taken into, like, must take the time frame that it was created into account. For example, um, if you were to compare like the original Mario game to current graphics, it would be zero. Obviously. Without question. But in uh, 1988... But in 1988, it was good. It was awesome. Allegedly, I was just born and you were like a year old, so... Yeah. 
Anyway, ow, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> Not relevant. So, uh, obviously, the first game released on PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. And was, of course, as most games that are released on multi-console and PC, the graphics were uh, more restricted on the consoles versus the PC. the PC. Which doesn't happen anymore, and I'm very uh, happy. Yes, thankfully, I'm they have, have, they have bridged the gap. They really have, and it took very little um, time too. Like and that astonishingly is, little time. Yeah, that is fantastic. I love that. <coughs> Excuse me again. Sorry, guys. I keep coughing. Um, but now, do you this... want to save this for first or last? Because that's the big point that we need to. Yeah, we're going to save up. that for last. Right, so we're going to take this guy right here and put it here. Yeah. And we're going to start back at the top because if you guys have seen any of the commercials for the Skyrim game and the re-relaunch of it, it's so beautiful. Re I said re-relaunch. Re-relaunch re of it. <laughs> the re-relaunch. The relaunch of it. You know all the stuff that they had, and we have a small list here, and you know, they, we all know they fixed the water. The big yes. thing about them fixing the water, though, isn't that Bethesda did it. It's the fact that Bethesda stole the mod to do it. Or paid whoever made it. Well, yeah, but they, they took the idea, because uh, somebody yes. did their water better, and it looks beautiful. It's, and it's freaking stupid amazing. Pretty. It's so good. And it makes me happy. Uh, is awesome. Uh, the lighting is the next thing. That's another big thing they promoted. Yeah, the lighting, and kind of coupled with that, is the HDR that True. they've True. they've added, which stands for high dyna high dynamic range, which I had to look up because I could never remember what the hell that stands for. We can make something up, but that's a lie. <laughs> and essentially, all of that is is they have improved the lighting to be more photorealistic. Like right now, you see all my face is illuminated. It does that in the game. Yeah. Except I don't squint as much in the game. <laughs> right. It's very bright on my face. Yeah. There <laughs> is uh, so. The lighting physics, I guess, have been dramatically improved. So when there is, like like when you're in a cave and there's dust in the air and you a beam of particles. light comes out, you see the particles. Before, what it did is they basically took a spot in the room, they made that spot the light, and it illuminated from that point. And it didn't pick up any particles, it only picked up physical things you could collide with. Yeah. Uh, so it used all the collision mechanics as well. So if there were crappy hitboxes on yeah. an item or a person, right. they were hard to see. <laughs> the yeah. new mechanic they're using basically makes light hit everything, regardless of it being right. a physical thing. They have also dramatically improved the range at which you can see things. Uh, Not to stop our show, but you're recording thing just did something and I don't know if we're still recording are we yeah 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 we're good good it, it, it just, just wanted to make sure it just lags because it's Wi-Fi okay we did a thing it. and I was like I yeah. don't want us to sit here and talk to no. each other about a video game pretending like we're doing no, it because no, then no. we look crazy we're good we're good er crazy yeah. er we're, we're totally fine but that, that's the big thing with the lighting and it, it visually it looks amazing because they don't just do it in case they do it through uh, the trees now too because yeah. they redid all the graphics in the trees yep it actually brings light and through like it does trees, and it's the, beautiful. The the uh, the introduction of better particle physics, particle physics as well, has made for a better overall visual experience. Which brings us to that third point there: the overall, the overhaul, overall, overall haul. Overall overhaul. Yeah, that. Um, they did a graphical overhaul of everything. Um, they boosted everything yeah, to the 60 FPS, 1080p, they improved the, all the polygon count and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you get a lot smoother uh, graphics. So your character creation can look better. All the weapons and stuff you create look better. Yeah. Fighting a dragon looks more like fighting a dragon instead of fighting By the way, a fake dragon. <clears throat> um, orcs now look super badass. See, I haven't got to see it because I haven't and, got to play this version. Well, they just like in general in Skyrim, they do because if you remember in Oblivion, they all looked like Shrek, <laughs> and it was terrible. At the same time, amazing. It was. I mean, it was. No, Shrek. I, I. It was love, hilarious. Yeah, it was. It was hilarious. Nothing's also, more fun than walking around um, Oblivion going, "Come on, donkey." As as a sort of general improvement, as far as like Skyrim versus Oblivion, Oblivion had. Four voice actors. Which is impressive for a game that scale. Four. One was Patrick Stewart, who did one character. And that's why they couldn't afford anyone else, probably. The Emperor. The other was Sean Bean, who played Another Martin Septon. Another reason why they couldn't one afford One character. Else. Did he die in that? Martin? 
Yeah. March after, yeah. I was say, he had to, right? He Sean did. Bean. Yeah, he did. It's been a long time since I played that, too. He totally so. did, by the way. It's I, hilarious. I played it a year before I played um, Skyrim, so. And then two other people whose names I don't know offhand. I could probably look up, but. They died, too. Screw it. Uh, and they did all the other voices. Yeah. Which is funny. One of them might have been the janitor. Because it was know. super glitchy. Uh, we're kind of diverging a little bit into Oblivion, but that's okay. Um, I'm Just sure. A bit of a game. I'm sure we'll get to Oblivion eventually. I'd like to. Um, I need to go play it again. But you'll be talking to somebody, and the voice will change from like Imperial to Orc. But like it'll be the same dude talking. It's hilarious. Anyway, sorry. I I digress. The key piece to the graphics uh, bit, which I threw this in there because I think it fits it, best it, it fits there. It fits there because you can't put it in gameplay or story. So it definitely fits in graphics. Is the improved load time. I cannot express how important that is. Yeah. Um, when I... Let's put it this way. The original Skyrim, yeah. when it came out, the load times were bad. Yeah. They were really bad. They were so bad, they made me feel bad on the inside. I would okay. have my 3DS with me, like sitting next to my chair while I was playing Skyrim so I could play that during the load screens yeah that's how bad it was yeah. and it holy crap it is so much better now in all fairness it starts out reasonably good in the older version yeah and as you progress in the game and you acquire more shit and you complete more quests and more things your, have to load harder characters your save load, file dynamic things your save file becomes larger and larger, your load times increased yeah. in time. But at the same time, you got to see how many times you could spin around whatever model you were looking at <laughs> and count it. And at first it was fun. And after you get about three quarters of the way through the game, you get to a dragon model like the because they have that statue in the game as one of the models. Mm -hmm. You're spinning it 40 and 50 times and you're like, you know, I think I'm playing a game, but I don't remember. Sponsor us. Sponsor us. Anyway. Also, Sharpie, go ahead and sponsor us, too. I think Burger King's going to sponsor us. Well, they might. That'd be weird. We'd appreciate it, because you can have it your way. <laughs> I'm talking video games. All right. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much all there is. Like Graphics-wise. Graphics is never going to be a long topic of discussion. Honestly, graphics and story rarely are. Uh, I feel like gameplay is the thing that we talk about the most, because when you and I talk about stuff outside of this, I mean, last time, when we first came up with the idea to do this now... We yeah. talked about games and the gameplay behind it more than we did the story of the graphics. The story matters <clears throat> to an extent depending on the game. The story, right. That's that's another key piece. Um, story, the story section of the triangle is, uh, has a bit of flux to it. Because, um, and we probably will never do a sports game review, but sports games, if we're taking story into account as a general rule, like, would be zero. Because there's no they story. They used to be. That's changed recently. The NBA Live games, the My Career, have stories now. 2016 was written by Spike Lee, and it's actually fantastic. Uh, the, the WB games have stories in them now. Hmm. Like, Madden doesn't. Well. Like, that's not yeah. going to have it. Forza, not so much. Let's race cars. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That's Let's it. race cool-looking cars. Don't get me wrong. Which is cool. I love Forza games. It's I think fine. they're beautiful and fun. They, they have don't do amazing, anything for me up here. That is a great point that I think has to be taken into account with games as well. Every aspect of a game, gameplay, graphics, and story, takes up space. And because of that, you have to cut in certain areas to improve other areas. Right. Which is why sports games, for example, while are fairly weak on story, they kill it are with these two. Amazing in graphics. Like, and they're amazing like you in can see even. sweat on their faces and shit. Yeah, and they look like the people they're supposed to be. Yeah, like there's so much data they, on the disc that they can contribute to, and, and, like, and like processing power, that they can contribute to the graphics that you get photorealistic. Which is great. Players. And, and that's stuff. something that we it's lose in games amazing. like Skyrim to make up for the story. 
Which is okay. And that's fine. I don't I don't expect it to be photorealistic. And that really brings us to the story in this because you know the sports yeah. games don't have it, but this game this game starts this, off with the most generic this, video game tale. This is where watch. yeah, this is where uh, we should say there are spoilers. Spoiler alert ahead. If you don't like uh, that, skip ahead. Don't like spoilers. Or stop watching. <laughs> Skyrim, but, here's the thing. Skyrim's been out for like five years now, so if you haven't played Skyrim and you're watching this to see if it's something that's worth your time... Stop now, go buy it. Stop now, go we buy it. Honest, it, is. it is worth your time, even though... In, don't buy it. In truth... <laughs> <laughs> unless it's Telltale Games. That, that, that one's, one's amazing. amazing yeah. Um... The story is, I would agree, is one of its weakest points. Um, at least as far as the main storyline goes. Yeah. You are randomly captured by the Imperialists and, or by the Imperial folks and sentenced to death because reasons. Uh, you see... A dragon appear, and you get to escape, which is actually, in all fairness, one of the coolest openings. Especially if you have the Thomas the Tank Engine mod. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, pause this video, open a new tab, and go search Skyrim yeah. Thomas the Tank Engine mod. Also, it's hilarious. Uh, look up the Macho Man. One. The Macho Man one. That one's priceless. Uh, that one's hilarious and terrifying. Oh my God, it's the stuff of nightmares. Oh yeah. Totally the stuff of nightmares. Clearly. But it's hilarious as well. So, some shit happens. You get to the big city, and oh god, there's a dragon attacking. Cool. Alright. This is like, literally, a couple of hours after your... Well, first you gotta go get the, the, the dragon stone or whatever. Anyway, point is... Well, I mean, the game starts with you literally 30 seconds away from getting your head chopped off. Yeah. Dragon stuff happens, and then you're, all of a sudden you're the guy you're that's kind the of, thing. Yeah, you're kind of thrust into it. It's the tutorial, sort of escape the prison segment, like in Oblivion. Make choices in it, though. Because you do make choices You do. You do make important. choices that are not really that important. Other but they than, are at the same time. Yeah. Because it shows you the mechanic of what your choices can do That's later true. in the game. That's true. So you, you you can choose to either go with the Stormcloaks, who you're kind of imprisoned with, or the Imperials, who are trying to kill you. I used to be like, I hate the Imperials, and then it turns out the Imperials are actually reasonably they're all right. cool they're, dudes. They're reasonably good people. They're not they, douchebags like the Stormcloaks. They follow the government rules, like, you know, normal people. Uh, anyway, it turns out that your character can absorb the souls of dragons and is thus they call the Dragonborn. And by stealing the dragon souls, you can learn shouts. Uh, there's a mod that you can use dragon souls for perk points, which is dope because then you don't have to get to level 256 to get bleh. all the perks. <laughs> because bleh. It's bleh. But... Uh, and then you go on this epic quest to stop to stop the big bad dragon man, who is this guy, Alduin. Alduin, he's a dick. Yes, his goal is to resurrect the dragons. Comes off? Yeah. That is awesome. Sorry. Of course he comes off. I thought it was a full statue. No. Put that back where it belongs. Now. No. <laughs> Go ahead and tell the story. I'm going to fix your statue. <laughs> Neat. Uh, right. Story. Now, this kind of ties into storyline and gameplay. Uh, more. Okay. Oblivion was the first game to introduce essential characters. As we told you before, there are not very many. There are. It's true. There's not a lot. <clears throat> um, most of your followers are just by virtue of, of them being your them followers. Being your yeah. followers. Uh, um, mostly the people that are important are the people who are in charge of towns, people who are in charge of any of the guilds and side quest setups that you do. Yeah. That, that's what it is. And by side quests, we mean the primary guilds. Like quests. with these guilds yeah. and the assassin guild. Those are the so, big guilds. yeah, it is possible, with the exception of the Dark Brotherhood, because you can go kill all them. Still my favorite set of quests. The yes. only reason I bought so dope. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online was to play the Dark Brotherhood stuff, and it is worth it. I haven't finished it, and it's worth it. It's amazingly it's fun. It's super, super dope. 
Um, <coughs> excuse me again, guys. But that is something that was incredibly frustrating in Morrowind, for those of you that have played that that far back. Because Morrowind had no essential characters. Uh, they weren't classified in, in, in the game as essential, so you could, in theory... Murder everyone. Murder everyone, and you get... And Morrowind didn't respawn people. Nope, you get a little pop-up. So, like, if you kill someone that's essential to the main quest, or any any primary quest, you'll get a little pop-up. And it says, You have just killed someone who is important to the story. Uh, you can reload a previous save or continue in this cursed world or some shit like that. And so it's like, well, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I what think was, that's the first time we've said that on this show, but, I mean, you're what, not wrong. What was really frustrating about it was there would be quest essential characters in random, like, ancestral tombs and And you didn't caves, know you weren't supposed to kill them. And you didn't know that you weren't supposed to kill them, and they were hostile to you because of, I guess, how you went through the cave or whatever. And then you'd kill them, and then you get the pop-up. It's like... And then you have to go through the entire cave again. What the? Fine. Or to hell with it. One of the two. But I would like to. It does all. not happen in this game, yeah. which is great. Yes, I that mean, is true. It's probably the smartest thing they've done uh, in this style of open world game is yeah. to make it so you can't kill people that you're not supposed to kill. Yep. Because another thing that it's they've a waste. done, it really is, it's and a waste it's time. primarily, I think, for. Um, legal reasons, but all of the children ah, the immortal are children. also essential. Which they uh, use... It's not legal, actually. It's to keep the rating. Which, oh, that's fair. Which they use to wondrous effect in the lamplight in Fallout 3. Talk about an infuriating place. If you piss off, because that's just kids that live in, in a little lamplight, and they all have guns, and they will, they will fuck your day up. If you piss them off, and you can't kill them. You have to run. Like, like I said, it's another of those things where it's to make sure the game can be sold because the yeah, in, no, no. rating like, is the I highest get, rating any game can get. Yeah. I mean, I get... And to I keep get that, why you they can't do. kill children. Yeah. I get that. <laughs> Darn. Right? But at the same time... <laughs> <sighs> so it's those, frustrating. It's very frustrating. Yeah. But anyway. at least we can't kill or we can't kill essentials anymore. That's but true. At the same uh, time, we can still get to the right decisions now. Yeah. Which is the next this thing is, This is a, a, a very cool thing uh, <coughs> um, that I like about open world games is that your decisions affect the world around you. Absolutely. Um, the, the, biggest, the biggest example of this, the most prevalent example of this, is the Civil War in Skyrim, which is the Imperials versus the, 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 Storm the Stormcloaks. And depending upon when you join a side, affects how you win or lose. How the war. you win or lose the war, and you can, for example, if you finish the main quest first before you do any of the civil war, you can broker peace between the two. Otherwise, you just whatever side you join will win because, because you, you're the dragonborn. Yeah. The end. Yeah. Now a lot of that effects um, a lot of those effects are cosmetic so like for example and this is still kind of in the Civil War mode as you take over cities for one side or the other you start to see Imperials there instead of Stormcloaks or vice versa. It basically just changes the card. Um, really is what it the, does. the flags so like they have uh, war maps and as you progress oh, through, about that. Yeah, like that, through that, the that's flag thing, color yes. changes, which I thought was cool. So yeah, like, your war table actually is a war table. It shows yeah. changes in the war element of the game. Yeah. Which is neat. Which is and very cool. I think it should be used more in these style of games because it, it reminds me faintly of the third Mass Effect, actually. Yeah. Because the war table in it changes based on what you do. Yeah. And like the, yeah. I draw a lot of comparisons between those two games, which is weird, because they just remind me of each other. They're about a war that you mm -hmm. have to affect directly, and what you do, what order, makes a difference. It's just to yeah. a broader scale than this game is, obviously. Right, 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 right. Uh, and... And it's sort of... I put... Decisions affect the realm, sort of. 
Because... It does nothing to you. It does... Nothing. Depending upon the quest, uh, like for example, the Dark Brotherhood quests don't really affect the realm. No. Uh, you, you do hear people, people talking about it. You're, yeah. You hear that, and that's kind of cool. People talk about it. There's no like mm-hmm. mail carrier like there was in uh, Oblivion, who would give you like newspapers, <laughs> which was funny. <laughs> which was funny, um, but like nothing. For example, uh, when you kill the emperor, if you're a member of the imperial army, it doesn't change anything no, it, it in the civil war. Jack it's like, oh, we'll just get a new emperor. It's fine. <laughs> no one cares. We've got extra. Yeah. It's cool. We'll call Patrick we'll, Stewart. We'll just pass on the Amulet of Kings, and it's cool. Uh, one thing that I really like is the lore. Uh, so, Tamriel or uh, of, Skyrim? Of, of, of Tamriel and Skyrim. So, like, you'll find books, because Skyrim takes place 200 years after Oblivion. Right, right, right. And so, so you'll find books that directly so you'll find to what books you did in Oblivion. That explain what happened in Oblivion, which I think is really, really interesting. It's like <laughs> I remember doing that. Because yeah. if you don't have a chance to go play Oblivion, which you should go play Oblivion, yeah. absolutely get the it's, game of the it's year. It's worth it. Really, really good. Absolutely. Um. Brings us what to the last two points, which you know about the DLC more than I do. I've actually never yeah. played the DLC. I know what they're about, but I've never had a chance to play them. The because... order in which quests are done affect other quests. Which we kind we of talked, talked about, about that. that. Uh, okay. <coughs> I love sandbox games, uh, mostly because immersion. Immersion. The same reason everybody loves sandbox games. For example, um, the newest Deus Ex game, Mankind Divided, is about a 20 hour game yeah yeah. Um, if you're playing New Game Plus which it's one of the few games that has true New Game Plus kudos to you guys whoever created <laughs> Deus Ex I don't remember the, the company uh, I don't remember either. Obsidian or some shit like that anyway no, point is same it, company, but same concept doesn't matter so uh, <clears throat> of course like playing through it again you're beastly or so it takes less time so it's about a 10 hour game after that but still they point gave is, you a real game but it's a short game and yes. it's not a true sandbox game because of it. it well, that's true. And no, very few uh, games are anymore. Sandbox games give you so much more to do. I think that's the point you're getting at. Yeah. Is that it just expands <clears throat> the world. This one, because once you escape, obviously the tutorial part is linear. You can't avoid that. Um, after that, though. After that, you're just dropped off in the middle of Skyrim, and it's like, okay... What do I do now? And it kind of says you can go here. Yeah. But you, nothing makes you go there. You don't even have to actually go do any of the real quests. You can go do whatever you want. I will generally follow the guy... To the town. To the town, just because I like his his dialogue, and he kind of points out things that get you some of the early trophies or achievements. Right, right, right. If you're after that sort of thing. Um, plus... Alvor, the the smithy in Riverwood, the first town, uh, teaches you about smithing and gives you free stuff. Gives you free stuff and gives you free levels and free skill points. Yeah, which but is which realistically is, speaking, when you leave the tutorial cave, there's a hill you can go down and to the right. You can say to hell with it, go left and just go off yeah. exploring and do whatever you want. Now that's dangerous because you'll die <laughs> because there are dragons is, out there. That is not. Uh, not something that is frequently recommended because now it's all leveled right. to a point. But you're still back. You can go somewhere and there will be trolls that are scripted to be there. Uh, if there are you're giants. if you're super low level, they'll be like injured trolls. Like their name will be like weakened troll or some shit like that. So they're easier to kill because you're level one or whatever. Um, but you, it's still a, still a ridiculously hard fight, especially because that early on you have. So I mean, like, if, if you're really skilled at these kind of games, or games in general, like, and you want that kind of challenge, it's great. But if you're not, and it's your first time ever playing, a, like, a sandbox game even, yeah, it basically holds your hand. And it's mm-hmm. so nice that it does that, because it it doesn't have to. Yeah. If, if, they, if Bethesda felt like it, they could tell you, oh, well, good luck. Right. Now, a lot of people take issue with that. Like, the old school gamers, uh, like Aaron Hansen. Right. And, and them. 
Uh, he's a grump. Anyway. <laughs> um, watching this, Aaron. What's up? Yeah, really. The fact that the tutorial is embed in the game a frustrates lot a lot of people. Um, and I, I, I get it. I get it, but, but I don't like it at, at the, the same, same time. Because time, I, I'm an old school gamer too. I just like you are. And I like tutorials to an extent. Yeah. But they're not not every game is made for the hardcore gamer. Sometimes you have to make That's games true. to make sure everybody can play them. Um, but at the same time, that hurts, go play Dark Souls. Make the tutorial optional. Right. And a lot of games do that. Right. Um, now some games like Arkham Knight, for example, there's tutorialness that actually gets you level Stuff, up points. yeah. If it gives you so something, then there's do. there's a reason. It's like, I'm just doing this to learn how to do it. No, I'm doing this so I can get another Wayne Tech point to get improved whatever. Right, and, and that, um, that, that's beneficial. And like, that is beneficial. But you can also it do it to learn how to do something. That's true. I like um, I, I think that's genius. At the same time, if you go back... And play the game again. There are, are yeah. If you go back and play the game again, that's just... Um, or if you're playing, like, if you're playing the, the newer games and you're used to tutorials, and then you play older games that just kind of throw you in there, it's like... It's a shock. What the... What, what do I do? How do I... How do I... How do I game? <laughs> For example, uh, this is a... This is an, icon, an iconic example. The original Zelda. Yep. The original Zelda game is ridiculous. Doesn't even I, I I don't think it even has opening text. Nope. Oh uh, no, it does. But you don't get it by hitting start. You have to wait on. You it. have to wait on it, right? But if you just press start, create your character name, and jump in, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you, you got. You just start in the middle of this field, and and it's just okay. Cool. The game's really confusing. I don't great, like though. it. I love it. I don't personally like I it. I loved it. Um, it's so hard. It's stupid hard. If like you've never played it as a kid growing up, it's so hard. Even if you did, like even then, it was ridiculous. With the strat guide, it's hard. Yeah, that's the only. <laughs> I, that's the only way I've ever beat. <laughs> it's like, is with a walkthrough. If you don't Sad. have a walkthrough, it's crazy. Now it's fun to watch on um, awesome awesome games done quick. Right. Which is uh, actually. A, a really great charity. Uh, there are well-known dudes that train for the year to do that. Yep. Um, but at the same time, they've trained all year by going and playing the game with walkthroughs. Well, that's true. And that's true. Uh, utilizing glitches, things like that. Like somebody, uh, I think, I think the the time for beating Ocarina of Time using glitches is like twelve minutes, yep. eleven minutes, and some change. The majority of mask is like ten. Crazy. It's awesome. But I, um, I think the point you're getting at with the story is is that at least the tutorial in Skyrim leads to the story. Yeah. And it lends to it. It's not it's not blatantly saying, this is a tutorial. This is right. how to play the game. This is, and, hey, you should go here and do this because you just got out of jail and you're lucky to have your head. And this this is That's actually, nice. um, they did this in Oblivion as well. <clears throat> as you are playing the tutorial, your skills can increase. Right. And that skill increase continues through the game, so it's it's like you get to keep it. It's not like oh, that was just that was yeah. Just it's a, not teasing you. with, it was hey, just here a tutorial. The powers you have. Screw you. Right. Case uh, case in point with that would be the original Assassin's Creed game. Yep. You start out with everything. It's like man, this is awesome. I got all these abilities, and I can like beat people up real good. And I got throwing knives and all this cool shit. And then they take it. From and then take it all from you. It's like it's something they did rectify that at least. They did. It took the one rest game. of the game. Just one game. To get it, Assassin's yeah. Creed 2 though you got counter right away, and that's all you need in those games. Oh god, I love these Assassin's Creed games. We should talk about those another. We will, because we'll, you know how I feel about those. Yeah, we'll get to those <laughs> for sure. Uh, I still need to finish. Maybe soon road. because they're releasing an Ezio uh, remaster for PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, the original? Yeah, ten days from now. Maybe not now for you, but for us. Oh wait, uh, like two. Revelations, Brotherhood, the answer okay. stories. Okay. Okay. So good times. Dope. But anyway, uh, back to our point because we are running longer than I thought we would on a talk show. No, I, we're, we're talking a lot, and I'm kind of shocked about it. I'm having a great time. Also, this isn't relevant to you, but I have to go pick up Dave. 
You guys know Dave. Like now? Soon. Oh, okay. I told him I would. Oh, fair enough. And fair we're enough. at the end of our list anyway. Because the last are. part of our list is the DLC, which we've talked about the DLC. Yeah. And that's going to be part of the story that I think we should hold off on. I don't think we should talk about it much. Outside of saying what it is, we just yeah. should say what, what happens. Okay. Because that's something that you need to right. experience on your own outside of that game. The only thing I'll say, and this is a little spoilery, is uh, the Dragonborn DLC, where you go to Solstheim, is super dope, because you learn some some new shouts that are actually, like, really fun. Uh, you can ride dragons. The end. Like, that. that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Uh, you, can, you can ride dragons. It's, it's glitchy as fuck, but it's awesome. Overall, <laughs> I mean, it's 400 plus hours of great gameplay. Yeah. Uh, gaming triangle-wise... I say it hits uh, every mark as high as possible. Yeah. Uh, except personally for me, despite, I disagree with you about the story. Yeah, despite the 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 opening tropiness of the story, I think the versatility of the side stories makes up for the for the over tropiness of right, the main right, right. story. Uh, so even though that is like, oh gosh, that's really uh, overdone. The side stuff that adds to the overall game, I think, more than makes up for that, which gives it the three out of three. Um, I, I think gameplay and graphics, especially with the newer version, crush it for it, and it helps so much. Yeah. And especially with cleaning up all that stuff that we talked about, that you know Bethesda talked about at the release. Cleaning up the graphical issues that there were before. It fixed it. Well, hands down, it fixed it. Yeah. And the o the only thing. And I get this. Um, if you like work really, really hard to get into places that should not be normally accessible, you'll have mesh problems. Where like, oh, this mountain chunk, which is, there's, it's missing some. But when you're down here, where you're supposed to be, you can't see that anyway. So nobody gives a shit. <laughs> so there are. So if you break the game, yeah, you don't if... expect it to be perfect. <laughs> right. Right. I think that's pretty straightforward too. I mean, it you, is. you can't expect to break something and expect it to work. That's true. That's true enough. It wasn't. It was designed to be pretty um, from your angle. As far as breaking the game, um, the best way to do that is with properly enchanted gear. That, and, that's the easiest. And, and you're not even and really breaking the game. Legendarying at that point. your magic. That's, I don't feel like you're even breaking the game at that point. Either. That's the way to like mass mass level. And that, that's the way to mass level. Breaking the game is like what we talked about with the mountain. I don't think that's breaking. I think that's just becoming better at the game and yeah. understanding the mechanic that you're given. Yeah. But overall, I mean, you guys can see it at the bottom here. But we we have to agree on this. It's ten, ten out of ten. ten. Easy. Now it's like, but there's only there's only three points per thing. It's nine. We have a bonus point for uh, that, that we can kind of give it arbitrarily. We We're understand. We're gonna call it the general badassery point. Yeah. Technically general speaking, badassery. most games. Would only be able to really get nine out of ten. If we ever get an editor, because when I do the no general game, badassery thing, I want to stamp right there on the graph. It'd be because, awesome, wouldn't because, it? Yeah, because no game really is perfect. No, never. It, it, we can pretend like it all we want, but the fact is, we can find there's, and everything. Yeah, there's there's just no way. We could even have it like a point five point for badassery because there's no way to get ten out of ten, no. really. Um, but for what we're doing here, there I mean, are, we're not experts yeah. on this. Yeah, there we're just are two guys who talk about video games in our spare time. Yeah. So I've I've been gaming for <laughs> twenty two years. I've been gaming how old are I? For twenty five years. My first video game was the no, was NES three. bundle of 20, Mario three. Twenty six. I'm sorry, it's twenty six years. Uh, when Older I was, than you thought, aren't you? When I was three years old. Uh, I kept tripping over shit, and my parents were like, maybe you need glasses. So they went, and it turns out, yes, I did need glasses. And because I, I had horrible, horrible vision, I had no hand-eye coordination. So the optometrist was like, you should get them video games. That'll do it. And sure enough, it did, and the rest, as they say. It is also history. is why I need to see the sun very often. That's that's fair. I am pretty pale. Mm -hmm. And this shirt's dope. I got it at uh, GameStop. Oh, nice. This shirt is also dope. I got it at... I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I it has issues. nothing to do with Skyrim, but uh, I wore it anyway because it's comfortable. But guys, uh, this has been fun. I hope you liked our first round of talking video games. We'll see you next time. Yes, uh, yes. I, was, I don't know if this is a fact, but I would like to talk about the Dark Souls series next. Okay. <laughs> So it means we got to do some research. 
So if you want to be really angry, guys, tune in. Such Actually, we'll see us really angry. We yeah. might throw Bloodborne in there with it. I don't, maybe not. Bloodborne was uh, better. Uh, it was less diff. It was better than the first two gameplay wise. The third one is a masterpiece. <sighs> And we'll talk about that next time. Yeah. I don't know how to end this. How do we end this? Hmm. Because we can't do what we do on each of our shows. Right, right, right. Uh, well. There's, uh, well, let's see. Will Wheaton does that. We don't want to do that. We're going to steal something from Will Wheaton? We can. You want to do that? All right, let's get Super Will Wheaton. That means we get to meet Will Wheaton. Play more games? I don't know the rest of it. So that, That's that all he it? says. I'll just so, like, he does this, this, uh, show called Tabletop where they play board games with famous people because he knows famous people. We don't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So play more games? Yeah. All right, well, everybody. Play more games. Skyrim 10 out of 10. Play more games. Bye-bye.